Greetings everyone, Meldron here, and welcome to another Def Camp Meldron TV Classic WoW Guide. And today guys, Meldron the Shaman is going to give Paladins a little bit of love. So I hope you Alliance players enjoy. We're going to be going over how to get Varigan's Fist, which is a Paladin class quest reward obtainable at level 20. Let's get right into it. What is Varigan's Fist? Well, it's a level 31, eye level, rare quality, blue, two-handed mace. And this is obtainable to paladins as low as level 20, via a class quest chain. Now, this two-handed mace is comparable to other weapons that you can equip at level 26 or have a level 26 requirement to them. It has high DPS and has a really unique weapon model. You can see on the weapon itself, it has this crown structure on the maw part of the hammer, which just screams paladin in class fantasy, which is really good because as you know, or as you may not know, Paladins are mostly relegated to healing roles in endgame PvE settings. So this weapon really gets to let you play the Paladin in that, as you see in the meme below here, that expectation that you have as a Paladin, wielding this giant two-hander and shiny gleaming armor. You should enjoy that while leveling because you may be relegated to wearing a dress when you hit level 60. So the stats are pretty interesting. We have 25.6 DPS, a 3.2 second swing, which isn't very slow, but it's pretty nice. 7 stamina, 12 spirit, and 6 intellect. And that will benefit you in different ways. So the damage will of course benefit you while doing damage, but the 12 spirit and 6 intellect is really going to help you have higher mana and in healing as well. So let's talk about how good this weapon can be. It's very good, very very good, but you should try to get it as early as you can. Just as the whirlwind weapon or the whirlwind axe in Warriors, it really behooves you to get this weapon as early as you possibly can because the upgrade relevance or the impact of that upgrade is much higher. The higher your level, the lower the impact relevance will be. And interestingly enough, there's not many items to compare it to in the same level and quality bracket. As you can see here, we have Varigan's Fist, which is equipable technically at level 20, even though it's a level 31 item level weapon. If you compare it to other equipable at 20 weapons, the Axe of Severing and the Dustbringer, it does a lot more damage. And they're really hard to get, there's other weapons too. The Axe of the Severing will only be available during the Scourge Invasion, like near the end of the classic timeline, and the Dustbringer is a world drop in SFK, which is going to have a really low drop rate. Now real quick, I want to talk about eye level versus level required. You hear me throw out these numbers and I say it's a level 31 weapon, but it requires level 26. There's a difference between item level of the weapon and what level you can be to equip it. In low levels, before we get to level 60 where things get really wonky, there's about a five level difference between what the item level is and what the level you can equip it. So technically this is equipable at level 26 weapon, even though you can equip it at 20 because it's a class quest reward. So just keep that in mind. And having a weapon like that as early as level 20 really has a high impact on your leveling speed and your group potential. Now here it is compared to items that are a little bit closer to its actual quality. In fact, the Strike of the Hydra is a direct comparison because they are both eye level 31 or equipable at 26 weapons. But remember, the Strike of the Hydra you have to get in BFD off the final boss and it's only a chance to drop. And moreover, you actually have to be level 26 to wield it. You can wield Varigan's Fist as low as level 20. That's why it's so impactful. As you can see, there's other weapons here that I try to compare it to, but a lot of them are hard to get. They're either world drops in dungeons or world drops in the world or their drops from bosses in certain dungeons. These aren't guaranteed, right? And Varigan's Fist, as long as you complete the quests, is guaranteed. So that's why it's so important to grab this weapon as early as you can. Also, this weapon is extremely versatile. Not only is it great for soloing or questing or increasing DPS if you're a DPS role in a group, but it's also excellent for healing. And there's two reasons why. One is, of course, the stats, right? So we have 12 spirit, 6 intellect. Spirit will let you regen mana if you're not healing, and the intellect will, of course, increase your mana pool. That's great. But it really fulfills the Paladin's melee healer role. And this is something I learned from Dunedain. When Blizzard first designed Warcraft, they really designed Paladins to be a melee healer, which is in melee range, more melee capability. And it's similar almost to a Shaman. So if you're healing as a Shaman, you don't need to put out heals, throw Wind Fury on your weapon, and just start white hitting. You can do this same thing with this weapon. Not only does it have high DPS, but it also gives you some stats that will benefit you wearing it if you're a healer in a group as well. So it really fills in that role. And it's just great if you're not healing, just fill in some DPS by white hitting mobs. Don't use anything mana intensive and allow your mana to regenerate naturally while you're adding some DPS for the group. Okay, you're probably asking yourself, can I do this quest myself? Now, some of the quests in this chain are definitely soloable, but many parts are either recommended to be in a group or you're required to be in a group to complete it. 
However, I'll argue here that grabbing four other paladins at level 20 is going to make this go a lot smoother and faster. There's two reasons why. The quests will be relevant to them. They're going to want to complete this quest. And two, you're going to be able to fill any role. So five paladins can easily do a dungeon, one is a tank, three DPS, one healer. You can have someone off heal, you can have someone off tank. It's just a really easy group that can get these quests done. And there's a lot of other reasons why five paladins will be great, but we'll get to that later. Most of it has to do with where you have to go in the world to get Get this quest done other classes may really really not want to go so let's talk about your point of contact the person who's going to get you started on this journey is Duthorian Rahl and he is a paladin located in the cathedral in Stormwind you probably have already talked to him you hope you did because at level 12 you get a class quest as well to talk to him whether you're dwarf or human to go to Stormwind and he will give you a quest chain that ends with you getting your resurrection spell redemption so definitely if you haven't done this by this point definitely make sure you get this done as well but at level 20 you'll also receive a quest to speak to him from your paladin class trainer and you're going to head back to Stormwind and talk to Dothorian and this is where the quest really begins. So let's get started on our journey. Part 1, your paladin trainer will tell you to seek out Dothorian Rahl in Stormwind and he's located at 4030 on the Stormwind map. And after speaking with him, he will hand you a book called the Tome of Valor. All you have to do is open your inventory, click on it, accept the quest that the book gives you, and turn that right back into Dothorian. So he's right there, you just turn the quest in, and he'll tell you to seek out Daphne Stillwell, who is in Westfall. So let's head over there. Now her house is located in a bit of a far away area in an orchard in extreme southern Westfall. So you're going to run towards like you're going to the dead mines. You're going to run past the main entrance and run past the back entrance of the dead mines. If you've ever done the dead mines, after you kill Van Cleef, you jump down and you go through that back exit to the dungeon, you'll come out. So when you come out of that exit, if you make a left, you head straight back and you'll reach the orchard. And she's just roaming around the orchard and you'll talk to her and then she'll give you another quest. You accept it. But as soon as you accept that quest, she'll run to the house and grab her gun. She's grabbing her gun because she's going to get assaulted by a bunch of Defias raiders. I'm going to really recommend... Before you head out to Daphne, make sure you have food and water, the highest level you can get, which is probably level 15, health pots, mana pots, bandages, whatever you think you'll need because you're going to have to regen your health and mana in between pulls because this is a three-phase pull. She'll get the gun, and the first wave, there will be three Defias Raiders. Now, these are level 17 to 18. They should be easy to handle level 20. Daphne will shoot at them, and she will get initial aggro. So it's very important for you to pull them off of her because she can die. Make sure you turn on friendly nameplates so you can actually watch her health and heal her if she gets low. So for the first wave, I recommend just tanking two of them and then let her finish off one. It's pretty easy. You should be totally fine after that. As soon as they die, eat and drink. Make sure you regen your health and mana. It's much faster to do this than healing yourself because now your mana pool is going to be low. So just eat and drink. And this is not time gated. So after you kill the first mob, the second mob will then come out. So you don't have to worry about them overlapping. So the second group is four. So again, I would recommend having her tank one and then you finish off the three. Now remember to always keep the groups near her melee range because she will help melee them down. Once she kills her target, she will help you melee them down. If you get low on health, throw a heal on yourself. Don't bop yourself. Don't use lay on hands. Don't use anything that's kind of an emergency ability right now because the hardest pull is coming. So the next pull is five Defias Raiders. In this pull, I recommend pulling three of them off of her and letting her tank two. Make sure her health doesn't dip below 25%. If it does, throw on a heal. If you get low, Maybe lay on hands, maybe bop yourself, do something to extend your life. Now, after you kill these three waves, the mechanic is over, and you'll be able to turn the quest into her. And she'll tell you to go back to the three and Rawl and Stormwind so you can get your Sense Undead ability and a pretty awesome shield. Now, I just want to say, I tried this myself. It took me a few times to get it down, but you can definitely solo this at level 20. You just got to be smart about how you use your cooldowns and make sure you eat and drink in between pulls and make sure that Daphne doesn't die. Because if she dies, you got to abandon the quest and start it all over again. Oh, and make sure you give Daphne Blessing of Might. It's going to really help her kill the mobs faster. All right, so after you turn in your quest to Daphne, she will task you again to head to Dothorian Rowl and Stormwind. Fly back over there, turn in the quest, and he will give you your Sense Undead ability, which works like Hunter Tracking, but you track undead units. And he'll give you a pretty nice shield, the Bastion of Stormwind, which is technically an eye level 25 green shield. Increases defense by three, so it's pretty nice for Paladin tanking. And he'll give you a new quest to seek out the husband of Daphne, Jordan Stillwell, who is residing outside of Ironforge. He's a blacksmith. So head over to the Deep Run Tram, or if you have your Hearthstone, sit over there just hearth back over to Ironforge. 
So Jordan is actually located outside of Ironforge Gates at 5337 in Dunmore, and he'll give you the quest, The Test of Righteousness. And this is the big part of the quest chain. He'll task you to pick up four items for him. White Zone Oak Lumber, his refined ore shipment, his smithing hammer, and a purified core gem. So let's get into each of these little subquests. Now I recommend getting the ore shipment first, you're already in Dunmoreau, you just gotta head over to Lock Modan to do this one. You technically don't need to be in a group to get this done, you don't have to kill any of the ogres. But you're gonna seek out Baylor Stonehand, and he's in Thelsimar, Lock Modan, at 3645. And you go to retrieve Jordan's ore shipment, and you find out that Baylor's lost the shipment, and ogres stole it. So now you have to get it from the ogres at 7222. So you're head across the lock, go into a outdoor elite area. So these are all elite ogres, level 19 to 20. So if you sneak around, make sure you don't aggro any of the ogres. You can find the ore shipment. It's located in a little pile of boxes and you'll click on the box, you'll pick it up. Now this may spawn elite ogre. If that happens, maybe bop yourself, run away, use hammer of justice, stun the target and run. Just make sure you don't aggro any of the other ogres while you're running away. So you're gonna head back to Baylor, give him the ore shipment and he'll give you the ref find or shipment so you've checked one thing off your list all right next is time to grab the white stone lumber this is really easy to get all you got to do is get into a dead mines group at level 20 as a paladin this should be very easy for you if you're with that other paladin group if you're with four other paladins all you got to do is run in kill the first boss and head into the mass room where the goblins are this will drop off probably the first goblin you kill any of the goblin wood carvers in that room will drop it so if you need to do the whole dungeon you can do that but if you're in that group of five paladins that are just trying to get this whole quest done together this will be really quick go in there kill a goblin wood carver loot the lumber and head back out now the next part's gonna be a little bit trickier since you're an alliance player you have to do the shadow fang keep and if you don't know shadow fang is in silver pine forest which is horde territory not only that but you probably haven't even been the south shore yet so you have to walk all the way through the wetlands through rothy highlands to the south shore and then sfk now this is going to be hard to get a group for as alliance so this is why i really recommend getting four other paladins that all want to get varigan's fist and knock this quest out and the best news is you don't have to complete the entire dungeon just like with the dead mines you only have to kill the first boss Rethelgore, you release Sorcerer Ashcrombie from his cage and he will open the door to the courtyard. You'll clear some pulls in the courtyard, head into the stables where the fell steeds are, don't pull them, and just click on the hammer and pick it up. It's on the top of a crate. If you want to get into a full group, power to you. There's some other really good loot drops in this dungeon, but it might be a little bit easier just to spam and trade and say, hey, need some paladins to do SFK for the hammer for Varigan's Fist, and I think that'll be a much easier way to get into a group. All right, we're on the last item. We need to retrieve the core gem. To do this, you're gonna seek out Thunderous Windweaver, who is a night elf in Aberdeen in Darkshore at 3740. And he will give you a quest, because he doesn't have the core gem, called Seeking the Core Gem. And it'll have you go to Black Fathom Deeps in Ashenvale down to the south, which is a dungeon, of course. And you'll have to retrieve a corrupted gem from Naga that are located outside the dungeon. So you don't have to go actually in BFD to get this done. You can kill Black Fathom Tide Priestesses, and Black Fathom Oracles. They range in level from level 20 to level 22 elite. It's very hard to solo. I did it with some really, really good gear. I would at least bring two people to get this done. And their drop chance is pretty high for this. So you may kill one or two of these Naga and the Corrupted Core Gem will drop. Once you have the Core Gem, you're going to head back to Thunderous and he will uncorrupt it and give you the Purified Core Gem. Now you have all four items. So with all four items in hand, you're going to head to Jordan Stillwell back in Iron Forge in the Outer Gate area and he will take those items, a little RP action will happen, he'll go to the forge and he'll craft your Varigan's Fist. Congratulations, you've done it. You've went to different dungeons, you've fought elite monsters, you've went all across the world to get this epic item. You should really enjoy it and you should really feel accomplished because it's a really awesome accomplishment to get done. And this is just a great example of the excellent class quests that the Vanilla WoW development team made for each of the classes in Vanilla WoW. So really enjoy this, use it as long as you possibly can. And congratulations again. Now you can be just like Arthas. Well guys, I had a lot of fun making this guide. I usually don't give Paladins a lot of love as a Shaman player or as a Horty, but I really enjoyed making this guide, and this is a really fun quest. If you liked this video, please consider liking. If you enjoy this type of content we make here at Defcat Melder on TV, subscribe, because we have a lot more guides coming. We have a lot more other content that we make for the Classic WoW community, including Def Talk, which is our podcast, which is listenable on Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes. We also upload it to YouTube as well. We have an awesome community on Discord. You should join us on there as well. And we have a Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. The links will be in the description below. Def Camp also streams on Twitch and on YouTube 
so make sure to follow him as well. Links to all these things are in the description, and timestamps and the slides will be available via a pinned comment below. Also guys, this guide, as well as many other guides made by people just like you and other content creators in the Classic WoW community will be uploaded to ClassicWoww.live, so don't forget to check us out on ClassicWoww.live. Last but not least, thank you patrons for continuing to support myself and my brother in making higher quality content. If it wasn't for your contributions, this channel would not be what it is today. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can find the link in the video description or you can click a clickable link at the end of the video. Thanks guys, keep on keybinding and grinding. I hope to see you in Classic Azeroth and stay tuned for more. Greetings adventurers, Melderon here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to sport some official Def Camp Melderon t-shirts and hoodies, head on over to Brand Young Media's Def Camp Melderon TV merchandise website. The link is in the description below.